Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. This is briefing number 102 and it's the 29th of January. So how is everybody doing? Now, I'm trying something new. I have, I've had a couple of people over the last three or four weeks say that they couldn't hear me so well. Most people don't seem to have a problem. It's only the odd one or two people. So um, Amazon had a little microphone set that plugs into my phone and I've got like a little thing it's somewhere down there I've tried to hide it because it's got a little green light on it um it's like a sniper light um so a little microphone so I'm going to try and see whether this makes any difference whatsoever I am not promising not to bash this microphone um or do something untoward with it but we'll see we'll see if it makes any difference whatsoever so I've got a few things to show you. Uh, I've got three finishes, three FFOs. They are the same thing. Um, let's not get really excited. But they will be going into my Etsy shop very shortly. Hopefully later on today, potentially Monday or Tuesday. We'll see how things pan out. I have a little bit of chart fettling to do, um, but I also have a lot of uh, schoolwork to do as well. <laughs> so I'll try and intersperse one with the other but um, we'll see what happens. So without further ado, let's have a little look and see the three button cushions that I was working on last week that I showed you that have been stitched up. So I'm gonna show you all three of them and then I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about how I made them and, um, and so on. So they are stitched in Sulky on 36 count Desert Taipan. Desert Taipan is a lovely neutral, but you could pick any neutral that you wanted, but Desert Taipan will be out at Nashville. So this one is called Button Up. Um, this motif here is taken from the A Burn Hope Sampler, which will be out later on in February. And I just picked a couple of my favorite uh, mother of pearl buttons. Now I love mother of pearl buttons. I've got a reasonable collection and I'm constantly adding to it as well. Um, she's got just a plain uh, velvet back and then I finished her with a little bit of chenille trim. So I'll show you the chenille trim and where I got that from um, in a minute. So that's button up. The next one is the four corners one. Now I should say this one I have stuffed with walnut shells. So this one's quite weighty. This one I have stuffed with a soft fill because I wanted to be able to put, I'll just not show you the really creased side, there we go. Um, I wanted to be able to put my button in the middle. Okay, so this one has got a fibre fill in it. Um, always needs just a little bit of fettling, this one. So we've got, there we go, you can see the white bit better there. A red, the light blue, the dark blue, and then a white. And then on the back, we've got the same. Now, I purposely didn't put them necessarily in the same place. Um, they are stitched. They're stitched to match on the front. And then when you stitch them on the paper, they match. But then when you stitch them, they're in different, a slightly different orientation. Um, but I quite like that. So there is the four corners one. As I said, I'm going to put on this chart the line that you would need to turn it into a biscorni. So if you wanted to stitch this and instead of having it as like a little dimple cushion, you wanted to make it a biscorni, then you'll be able to do that. And then the last one is my little panic button. So if you can see, it's a beautifully carved um, mother of pearl button and I wanted to make this one just quite simple quite simple I think once it's got a couple of pins in it or a couple of needles in it that's going to be plenty it's got some chenille trim around the outside and then on the reverse it's got another little motif which is the center part of this one so you'll get all three charts in the pattern Okay, I'll give you some guidance on how to make the pillows, although Vonna has a great pillow, tuto pillow tutorial. 
just some little tips to make them. And the chenille, now I've had this for a while and I have mentioned it before but I'm going to mention it again. So I bought a little while ago now 15 chenille trims. Now you can see I've used them um, quite a bit. Now these are 15 assorted chenille trims and they're from a company called 21st Century Yarns which actually is not very far away from um, where I'm from. So it's from in Kingham which is sort of between Stowe on the Wold and Chipping Norton I would say. And you get 15 different lengths of their hand dyed chenilles and you get two metres of each one which is plenty for smalls finishing so this one is a rainbow one I used the blue one from the packet for that one and I used the red one for that one now it was by chance that I had the blue and the red Ooh, just kicked you sorry you can purchase specific colors on their website but for 10 pounds for 15 different colors think it's a bit of a bit of a bargain and it's a really nice narrow chenille Let's see what else I've got in here I've got a ready pink one a really nice narrow chenille which is perfect for smalls because you don't always want a really really thick chenille especially for a small let's just see if I can they, they come in these little sort of bundles and uh the easiest one to see is the one that I've already untangled so they're perfect and they're dead easy just to either sew on or to um, to glue on so that is going to be a new release if you'd like to get your hands on them you can just go on to my Etsy store now and just favorite my shop and then as soon as they're there you'll be able to grab them so we see if we can get a half decent screenshot this week <laughs> we shall see so they kind of took up a reasonable amount of time this week. I actually had my first non-stitchy day on Wednesday. We had a parents' evening um, and by the time I got home from the parents' evening at about um, eight o'clock, all I could do was just stare into middle distance. <laughs> I literally just sat on the sofa and just like that until somebody told me to go to bed. And that's how it panned out. So what else have I worked on? I have been working on my year in the woods and I am pleased to say I am just gonna take that needle out good job I've got three pin cushions there I am pleased to say I have finished the deer now I notice I've been calling these snowdrops I think they're meant to be lily of the valley actually and that's what I meant but I just said snowdrops so there is the deer, finished. There is the fox, finished. And the swans, very nearly finished. So my goal is to finish these three by the end of January, along with my Noel sampler. So I've got two, three more days. Now, there's not much left on the swans at all. So... Let me show you what I've got left on the swans. There is a few little snowflake doodads to put in. There's another big sort of star snowflake under one of their chins. This bit of infill here, which is white, and then a couple more doodads there. And I've got to fill in the windows of the cabin. But other than that, it is completely finished. So that's probably... I think an evening's work. I think I can get that done in an evening. Can I get my Noel sampler finished in an evening? Maybe not. Maybe not. I might need to go just into February for that. But doesn't it look fabulous? Doesn't it look fabulous? So there we go. Now the one thing that I should have done this week was to start the caterpillar cross stitch stitch along 
the first episode, first episode, the first part of the um, British Adventure Cell is released. So here are the colours and here is the needle minder that goes with it. There we go. And the fabric is a 28 count pale blue. Or it was. Well, technically it still is a 28 count pale blue, but I have um, doctored it slightly. You know what I'm like, I can't leave a bit of fabric alone. <laughs> so, <coughs> either it is going to be that side, or it is going to be that side. Most of you have probably just said, looks the same, the back and the front look exactly the same. And they probably do. But one side, what I've done is I've sprayed this with um, aquamarine, uh, then I sprayed it with denim blue, and then it has got a little bit of like a greeny in it. You probably can't tell the difference in the spots. So one side, this side, is the side that took the full hit of the spray and this is what shows through on the other side so I generally with these seem to like the reverse but I just wanted to um, make it a little bit patterned so where have I just put those threads down that's unbelievable I'll put them back in the bag. There's me. I don't expect myself to be tidy. Where are we? There. So, that is what the colour palette will be. Let's swap them over that way around. There we go, that's better. And my fabric. Now, like I said, that's exactly the fabric that they sent me. I just took two minutes and sprayed it. So where did we start with the adventure cell? We have started with the Angel of the North, um, Edinburgh Castle, the Isle of Man, Blackpool Tower, I think, oh there's a sporran, not a sporran, a kilt, there's a kilt as well. So we've sort of started up in the northeast there um, and slightly over onto the northwest side. I think it's probably we've started at one of the narrowest parts. So that's where we are. So I will get started on that this week. I may even start it while I'm waiting for this video to um, to upload. So that is exciting. I've also got something else very exciting to show you in just a minute. But let's have a look at the freebie. Now I picked this one out. Um, this actually came out in November. This was Beth Twist's Black Sampler November offering. But I think you could make this quite spring-like. It says, within this house my, may peace abide. Now I, I can't guarantee that I haven't shown you this before. We are on to, as I said, over 100 episodes of this. I did 30, well, 24 freebies in uh, November. For, <coughs> What a fuffle. 24 freebies for Flossmas. We nearly had a fluff word there. 24 freebies the previous Flossmas. 24 freebies the Flossmas before that. So uh, I'm getting new subscribers all the time. So if you have some seen one before, it might just jog your memory that you liked it or it might be completely new to you. So um, the cross stitch community goes through phases of releasing lots and lots of freebies. Um, so uh, yeah, sometimes we might see things twice. But there we go. I like that. It almost gives me the sort of Rennie Macintosh feels with the with the roses. Something about it that gives me the Rennie Macintosh feels. Right, let's talk super exciting news. Now, while everybody else has been going about their daily business, uh, Kerry and I have been cooking something up. So who is Kerry? Kerry is the genius behind Roxy Floss's Co. Blah, 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 blah. Roxy Flosco and she has converted one of my samplers into her fabulous flosses. So 
which sampler is it. I'm going to show you the fabric. This is the fabric. This is dirty porcelain. Now it's actually showing up a little bit more creamy. Let's try and get a nice big bit of it. A little bit more creamy than it actually is. It's got more of a kind of a grey ground than a yellow ground to it. And these are the flosses. Now I'm not going to tell you the numbers or the names of the flosses because this is Kerry's conversion. But would you just look at these now there may be one or two in here that have been sent as an either or just to see how they stitch up but for the most part that is the palette so we've got dark reds and bright reds and pinks and pinks and blues and greens and some paler ones. There will be a little bit of ghost stitching on this one. And this fabric here is what it's going to look like. So here is the floss toss. So which sampler is it? It's this one. Would you look at that? I can't remember her name now. Anarchles or Anarchles. That, if you remember, is the most amazing, amazing sampler. And these are Kerry's flosses for the conversion. Like I say, I think one of these pinks here is an either or version. So we'll see how it stitches up. But you can see that is going to be amazing. So this is going to be a collaboration between Roxy Flosco and myself to get the model up together. And then hopefully you will be able to buy the conversion and the fabric and the kit should you wish or you'll be able to buy just the chart with the DMC but look at that isn't that amazing so she sent me some 40 count and I've noticed there's a little label on it that says 40 plus 5 so I wonder if it's actually closer to a 45 count I have to get the magnifiers out, but I cannot wait to get started. I'm going to have to hold this back a bit further. That's a better. Yeah, it's throw, it was throwing up a bit of yellow, but it's not. It's definitely, sorry, I've just bashed that thing. Uh, definitely is more of a neutral grey tone. A lot of work to do, a lot of work to do, because she is a big, big sampler. But she's got so many beautiful, beautiful motifs in. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. There you go, I've just bashed it again. To get to that big motif in the centre. Amazing. She's from Stamfordham, I believe. Now oh, I've said it, I'm going to have to check. Yeah, Stamfordham, which again is up in the northeast, I believe. Okay, haul. Have I got any haul? I've got a tiny, tiny little bit of haul, really, that isn't terribly stitchy related. Um, I went to a antiques fair today at the National Botanical Gardens. Um, I saw lots of beautiful things. I saw a sampler from Cardigan. Um, I didn't get it, but I've got the card. We shall see. Um, I saw a couple of other samplers. Um, lots of little marking samplers, bits and bobs. What did I actually buy? Two pins. <laughs> Two pins with thistles on the top. They're just white metal ones. They're not, uh, not anything fancy, but I just really like them. And I thought they will come in handy for going in the top of a drum or the top of a pin cushion or something. I went to 
the local bead shop in the week uh, because I think I had originally told you see look I'm already using it now I think I had already originally told you that I planned to do a bead border for this one well it didn't quite work how I thought it was but anyway I've been to the bead shop and they had these gorgeous little lamp work beads for sale which I intend to make into some pins so there is a little snowman who is cute as a button and a little Santa who is also cute as a button and there is also which is going to be sooner rather than later with Easter on the horizon a little glass bunny how cute is that and the other thing that I bought is another flower frog I just really liked this flower frog I've not had a ceramic one not since the first one I bought the first one I bought was a ceramic one and um, I thought that's a nice shape I, well, um, if I remember I'll show it to you one day I'm sure you've seen it before um, that's a nice shape and it's like this, this green sort of bulbous shaped ceramic flower frog and it arrived and it was massive it's literally like this and I was like mm, it's a bit bigger than I thought it was and then I saw another one it's for a grave I bought a flower frog for a grave <laughs> so anyway I wanted this one to sit by my stitchy chair because it's a little bit smaller than the grave one that I have right next to my chair and it's by is that the right way up no there we go jersey pottery it's a jersey pottery one um i don't know if it is from the 70s but it's certainly got like a 70s vibe to it so i can then add in a few pairs of my scissors there we go because you needed a demonstration on how to use a flower frog for scissors didn't you <laughs> Anyway, so I've got a lot on my plate next week. I have got some charting to finish on uh, A Burn Hope, ready for her to be released in February. I'm going to get those up onto my Etsy shop. I want to make a start on my uh, Adventure Sale, my British Isles Adventure Sale. I've also got a little uh, memorial piece that I want to start. Um, my dad passed away on the 4th of February, um, lots of years ago now. Well, yeah, more years than I care to actually care to remember. Uh, it goes so quick, doesn't it? You suddenly think, how are we? 14 years, something like that. Um, so I'd like to start that. Um, I would also... What's the other thing I was going to get done this week? You see, now this is part of my problem. I've got a list, and before I can write it down, it's gone. What was the other thing I was going to do? Brenda's cell. I need to get Brenda's cell started, and I need to get on with the Leo and Roxy floss. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. Fabrics by Crafty Kate. Crafty Kate has started her own YouTube channel. It's fabulous. So I will link it down below. So if you want to go and have a look, she has got some really, really great projects. And as you would imagine, the fabrics are amazing. Um, I've also been watching Alba Sitcher, Brenda and the Serial Starter, who showed um, Laura's been working on Susanna Eccles. So uh, it was lovely to see her again in the sort of being created by somebody else um yeah that's about it i'm waffling i'm waffling now so i'll see you next week stay classy stitchers